in previous videos, we've looked at how do we make decisions in a flowchart. And a decision is a one-time event where we decide to do something or not, and then we continue on with our program. But what happens if we want to decide to continue to do something? This is called a repetition, or in some cases, we more accurately refer to it as a loop. Now, in programming, we actually have two different types of loops. We have a conditional loop and a counting loop. And in flowcharts of old, we used to have a special symbol to show that. However, nowadays we typically use a similar process, and I would like to show you that. So let's start off with something really simple, a counting loop that's just going to count from 1 to 10 for us. So over here inside my Lucid chart, I'm going to start like I normally do and create a terminator. I'm going to create a process box to define a variable, x equals 1. And then I'm going to have a decision statement. Inside my decision statement, I'm going to say x less than or equal to 10. So my start is going to flow to x equals 1. x equals 1 is going to flow to x less than or equal to 10. Then if that's true, we're going to use a data IO. We're just going to say print x we don't need to do anything really extra than that. And I'm going to flow my true over to my print x. But then I want to do something a little bit different. I want to increment x. Increment just means to increase its value. Decrement would mean to decrease it. So I'm going to use a process box for this. And I'm going to simply say x equals x plus 1. Now, a lot of languages have different ways of handling this that can make it a little bit faster and easier. So we might see x++ if we're in something like C++, or we might see x plus equals 1 if we're in Python. So I'm going to come over here and flow print x to x plus 1. This is going to increment it, and then we're going to take our flow from x equals x plus 1 back up to just before we make our decision. So this way, we loop back and we've incremented this counter. Okay, so we start with 1 and we're going to do this until x is no longer less than or equal to 10. But what are we going to do if this is a no? As all of these are in the yes float line. Well, I'm going to simply come in here and end and draw a connector like this. So we start, we define x, we check for a value. If x is less than or equal to 10, we print out x. We say x equals x plus 1, therefore x would be 2. Then we flow back in just before our condition. At that point, we check is x less than or equal to 10. We do this until x is equal to 10. We print out 10. We increment it. Now x is 11. And when we check to see is x being 11, less than or equal to 10, we say, oh, it's no longer true. Therefore, we go to our no, and then go down to our end terminator, which we're going to define as end. And that's going to simply be how we create a very simple decision in order to make a loop. And this is a counting loop because we do it a set number of times. If I want to change the number of times, all I have to do is change my decision and say, well, x is less than or equal to 20, or x is less than or equal to 5, or I can change my starting value and say, you know what? X is going to start at 5. We're only going to count from 5 to 10. And likewise, I can actually change how much we increment by. I don't have to increment by 1. I can increment by 10 if I want to. But typically, 1 is what we're going to use. So this is a simple example of how we're going to do this process. Hopefully, you like that. We've got another type of loop, our conditional loop, coming up next. Why don't you check it out?